Hell to be all is cracking his deep about to react to this event. This is the most dangerous award show in music. <laughs> is this the Source Awards? <laughs> I've heard so much stuff about the Source Awards. Wasn't they like shooting niggas there and fighting and um, stabbing people? It was like a whole bunch of stuff going on. So I've heard. Uh, but, but let's see what uh, they're saying about it. Let's watch. What I considered real hip-hop died at the 1995 Source Awards. I was literally at its funeral. These words yeah. from Questlove paint a yeah. pretty bleak picture of what happened in one of the most electrifying but dangerous That was the last one? History. Tensions were high, rivalries were fueled, and hip-hop would never be the same again. In the 90s, magazines okay, were a lot more important. In the absence of social media, print media was a crucial channel of communication between artists and their fans. You had to pay for music with your hard-earned cash, so the reviews would somewhat help you decide yeah, which records were worth looking into and buying. The source started off as a newsletter in 1988 by David Mays and Jonathan Schechter, two guys from Harvard. But despite their backgrounds, they were deeply passionate about hip-hop culture. And as hip-hop grew into its golden age during the 90s, the source became the hip-hop I thought Benzino was... The magazine started its first award show in 1994, and the following year was set five? to be televised. Little uh, did they know that, maybe it was for better or for worse, this would become one of the most important nights in hip hop history. The event was held on August 3rd in Madison Square Garden's Paramount Theater. Everyone who was anyone in 90s hip hop was all under the same roof. Biggie and Diddy were there, as were Snoop and Dre, so was Lil Kim. Nas, Wu Tang, the list goes on. Basically, everyone was there. But with one notable exception Tupac Shakur. He was 300 miles north at Clinton Correctional Facility and serving a prison sentence. But his presence was still felt that night. A day before Tupac was arrested in 1994, he was shot five times at Rob. Shakur alleged that the people responsible were connected to Biggie Smalls and other people at his label, Bad Boy Records. Tupac's West Coast label, Death Row Records, was now at war with East Coast Bad Boy Records, and the classic East Coast-West Coast feud was in full swing. Hip-hop had always been a competitive art form, but things were now getting violent, and nobody knew how things were going to pan out. The Source Awards meant that all of the individuals in this feud were in the same building, Tension was definitely in the air. The night's opening turned out exactly as planned. Biggie Smalls won Best New Artist in his hometown, shouting, Yo! Brooklyn! Oh, this is deepening. To an electrified audience. The first ripple of tension came with the New Artist of the Year group category. To a modern audience, it seems obvious who should win this award. While the hype was focused on rappers from the East Coast or the West Coast, the source decided to shine spotlight on neither of them. Instead, the award went to a little-known rap group from Atlanta at the time called Outkast. Mm. Big Boy was humbled and highly complimentary to the New York audience. But Andre 3000 had something he wanted to get off his chest. Ooh, In his okay. unapologetically Southern accent, he took the mic and said, I'm tired of folks, you know what I'm saying? Was that Mario? I'm confused. How old is Mario? Oh, that is... That's not Mario. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to say, ain't no fucking way Mario should be here. That's not him, my bad. Folks, you know what I'm saying? Closed-minded folks, you know what I'm saying? It's like we got a demo tape and nobody want to hear it, but it's like this, the South got something to say. That's all I got to say. Andre 3000 has shifted Ooh. focus from the whole East Coast, West Coast feud, but only for a moment. The drama was set to escalate further on into the night. A huge win for Bad Boy Records was Lyricist of the Year, which also went to Biggie. And again, the New York audience was excited to see him win another accolade. Dr. Dre would be the first person from Death Row to step up onto stage. It was for Video of the Year for the song Natural Born Killers. He also paid tribute to his fellow NWA member Eazy-E, who had passed away from AIDS-induced pneumonia earlier that year. It was a dignified acceptance speech without any drama, something which would be replicated by upcoming winners. Of course, it's the hour mark that things really start to heat up. 
Flavor Flav announces that the winner of Soundtrack of the Year for a Motion Picture would go to Above the Rim, an album released by Death Row Records. Coming up onto stage was its executive producer and CEO of Death Row, Suge Knight. He thanks God. He thanks everyone, Death Row. He sends out a special message of love out to Tupac in prison, but then he uses his time on stage to take some shots. Any artist out there want to be an artist or want to stay a star, don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the negative producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing. Was making oh shit i've heard that line before maybe on a song or something that's a very popular line that i've heard many times before and i ain't never fucking seen this but yeah he couldn't talk about diddy obviously why would you get up there and be messy like that the fuck but yeah i've, he I've heard that many times it had to be on like songs or movies documentaries something in a reference to p diddy a chorus of boos is heard as Suge sarcastically salutes the audience. Things had turned sour. Up next was the award for producer of the year. This is Presenting this award was film director John oh, Singleton. Oh, he's so ugly. Sam Cassell. That's Sam Cassell. He's known to be one of the ugliest to ever... Uh, <laughs> to ever, <coughs> to ever uh, be in the NBA. Directing Boys in the Hood in 1991. He sensed a lot of tension in the air and he made some lighthearted jokes about the Knicks to calm things down. But eventually he addressed the elephant in the room. Before we pass out this award, we gotta say something, all right? You know, we gotta kill all this East Coast, West Coast, South, Midwest, the sensitive rap, because, you know, there's a lot of devils out there that would be damned if they could ban it. And we wouldn't be having no show and not, a lot of y'all wouldn't be making no money. Singleton's argument was simple. You guys are making a lot of money doing what you love. Why would you Chill do up. anything to ruin to it? There was also yeah. a lot of moral panic Thanks. about hip-hop in America at the time. So violent beefs were really? only giving hip-hop critics more credibility. Mm. But Singleton's words seemed to have fallen on deaf ears. Yeah, he listed out the nominees for Producer of the Year, two of New York's greatest ever hip-hop producers, DJ Premier and Pete Rock, were on the list, and their names alone mm. brought out mm. cheers from the local audience. Singleton reads out the winner and says, The winner is, uh-oh, we're going to have some trouble here, it's D-R-E. Like the D-R-E. This caused a huge eruption of noise. Why? It was a moment that Questlove, who had absolutely nothing to do with this feud, left the building. Oh, uh, why? Dre walks up on the stage and realizes that Snoop Dogg joined him on stage for some moral support. Snoop decided to call out the audience. He grabs the mic and says, What? Wait, wait, wait. The East Coast don't love Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg? The East Coast ain't got no love for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Death Row? Y'all don't love us? Y'all don't love us? We let it be known then. We know y'all East Coast. We know we at East Coast. And Snoop had added fuel to the fire, but also had a serious point. The tribalism of the New York audience was so strong that they were booing one of hip-hop's biggest legends. Could you be devoted fans of hip-hop yet have no respect for the work of Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and the West Coast? Dre takes the mic off Snoop and then things calm down. Check it out. We're trying to make music for everybody to enjoy, you know what I'm saying? The next award kind of proved Snoop's point. A Lifetime Achievement Award was given to the recently deceased Eazy-E, okay, and a short video was produced explaining how Eazy-E was the founder of Gangsta Rap alongside his other NWA members, Don't including the person man. they just booed, Dr. Dre. You could argue that Biggie yeah, would not died. be the huge success he was at that night without NWA laying the groundwork for Gangsta Rap. Eazy-E's former group Bone thugs in harmony then performed a song in his honor. Uh -oh. But just after, someone else was asked upon the stage. Presenting the next Love award was Sean Diddy Combs, the very person Suge Knight had just mocked in front of Madison Square Garden. Diddy had three options here. He could add fuel to the fire and diss Suge back. He could say absolutely nothing at all. Or he could address the issues but also be the bigger person. Thankfully, he chose the third. Diddy said... I'm the executive producer that a comment was made about a little bit earlier. But con check this out. Contrary to what other people may feel, I would like to say 
and I'm very proud of Dr. Dre, of Death Row, and Shook Knight for their accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? I'm a positive black man, and I make music to bring us together, not to separate us, and all this east and west that needs to stop. He also said one love and sent out an olive branch. He then okay. told the crowd to... So give it up for everybody from the east and the west that won tonight. The next award okay, was okay. for Best Solo Artist, and this award was given to Snoop Dogg. Snoop had to walk up on stage once again, but his words were more measured now. He hugs Diddy and gets on the mic. Oh, we doing it like players now. That's right. Now that we done made the East Coast, West Coast thing officially one love, I want to thank everybody out here. Snoop had accepted the olive branch. Okay. The next award winners were also keen to calm things down. Despite having nothing to do with the feud, from the East Coast, RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan sent a message of peace, as did Craig Mack, who also hailed from the East Coast. Album of the year went to Notorious B.I.G. The whole audience was bated breath waiting to see what was going to happen. Was Biggie going to heat things up or cool things down? To the relief of many people in the building that night, he just gave a standard awards acceptance speech. He paid tribute to his family members yeah. and said, We did it, Brooklyn, we did it! It was later revealed that Diddy was the one that had told oh, Biggie not to say anything inflammatory. Like many award shows, there was an after party. Things moved on Death to the tunnel nightclub up. close by. This bar was Diddy's stomping ground, and he was ordering buckets of champagne. But standing across from the other side of the room was Suge Knight. Diddy confronted Suge and asked him if he was referring to him during his speech. Suge's response was, was, nah, I was talking about Jermaine Dupri. Again, Diddy was faced with a number of options, but again, he chose the most sensible one. He put his ego aside and let Suge think that he believed him. In reality, he didn't. This after party was revealed by Diddy in the Drink Champs podcast. He was then asked if his move would have altered hip-hop history. His response was that things would have been much, much worse if he decided to escalate. Questlove's damning words about the event would ring true much later on. Two of hip-hop's greats, Tupac and Biggie, would be dead within the next two years, both of them in their mid-twenties. The Source Awards 1995 was an event that heightened these tensions and the very thing everyone warned about came true. Something in hip hop died that night. Something that would never make it the same again. Oh, well, am I making that up? Did niggas not shoot at the Source Awards? I feel like I've heard that before. But maybe not. Maybe it just, you know, added to the tension of the East Coast, West Coast beef uh but i was expecting something crazy to pop off like this whole time <laughs> i was anticipating like you know him saying and then someone got stabbed on st like that's what i thought was about to occur but i guess not maybe it didn't get as violent as i'm thinking it did i could totally be making that up i don't know uh but yeah this was interesting seeing how you know things slowly got worse and worse and then it led to tupac and biggie dying unfortunate y'all let me know what y'all thought though let me know what other videos you're gonna watch and i'll see y'all in the next one Bye.